Uh, good evening, Catapult. Uh, welcome to our Friday night. Um, we're going to start this night off with just a song of worship. Just to get our hearts ready to worship our God today. Uh, can we bow our heads for a word of prayer as we just dive into a time of worship? As we just dive into this night of just real conversations. Dear Father, as we just gather here to worship your name, that God, would you remind us of your truth today, Lord? That God, would you remind us of your gospel, Lord? And that God, we continue to look towards you, Lord? That through it all, may we continue to rely on your word today, Lord. The song we're going to sing is the song we sang last week. It's called Graze Into Your Gardens. Um, I want us to continue singing this song because of just what the song is standing for, that we're not afraid to show God our weakness because of who God is. That when we believe that God can turn everything for His good to He couldn't feel me A man's empty praise And treasures that feed Never enough And you came along And put me back together is now satisfied here in your love oh, oh there's nothing better than you oh there's nothing better than you oh there's nothing nothing is better than you
God, as we just dive into this time of this, going through these topics of real conversations, Lord, that through it all, through all these conversations, whether there's controversy or not, that God, will we align our hearts to your truth? God, as we just listen to this next time of this, this topic, that God, would you continue to keep our hearts open to your truth, say, Lord. Stay praying, amen. Hello. Uh, oh, okay. All right. It's working. Man, I think we should just have more of like an introduction, like video, you know, like a theme song or like an intro song, like TV shows, like something with a cool like rhythm to it. Like, oh, does he have one? Well, he didn't do it. So crazy, Curtis, you messed up. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> All right. You guys technically have mics that you guys can use. Just letting you guys know. Um, yes, those things that are next to you. Perfect. Everyone, welcome. Thank you guys for joining, tuning in. Um, uh, oh, well, it's a little late, and it's also not my theme song. That's the theme song to The Office. One of the, the, the coolest shows out there for all you cool cats and kittens. Um, okay, but um, yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, this is our second rendition or edition of What Do You Think, which is our response to our Real Conversation series on Sunday. Uh, this past week, the topic was depression. So we have, I guess it is going to be a relatively heavier topic, but we're going to kind of try to keep it light in the beginning or just light throughout, not to like take light of the, the topic, but as a, an uplifting way, right, guys? Yeah, we're going to work. Yeah, okay. So we're going to, you know, we, we have our two guests right here, which is great. They are two wonderful women of God, and they're also two wonderfully nervous women of God. So if you guys in your homes and in the chat, if you guys can just give them some love. Uh, I know the ninth grader girls would love to, to say that, but let me just give a little bit of introductions. We have Jeannie here. They're both Marriage and family therapists in training? In training. In training. All right. So they're, they're not there yet, but they're close. Mm -hmm. And they're very, they're very well trained. They have lots of hours seeing, you know, people and counseling them. And they're uh, puting them? Is that the word? Therapizing. No. Therapizing. Th therapizing. That is the word. Um, oh. uh, but <laughs> Crazy Curtis, you are very crazy. Just letting you know, uh, crazy, crazy Curtis is also a very crazy decorator. He actually decorated most of this stuff. All this cool stuff right here is all thanks to him. Yes. So perfect. Uh, so again, we're introducing our first person who, Jeannie here is, um, Jeannie, I actually, funny story, I went to high school with her, but I've never talked to her in high school. I honestly barely even knew her name. Um, that is sad, but now we're friends, and it's great. Ashley is someone I know, and <laughs> that, that, there we go. <laughs> she is someone I know, um, and as you can see here, we're kind of underdressed for the situation, whereas Ashley is looking exactly right into, she fits right into what we're talking about. She just came from work. She looks yeah. great, um, but yeah, we got to step it up here. Um, again, you guys can tune in, comment, whatever you want through the mic. This is a conversation. I'm not just talking to you guys. I'm not a pastor or something. So please feel free to just chime in whenever you guys like. Uh, but again, okay, so let's start off with some easing questions. So we're going to start with some light topics, and then we're going to go in more into some heavier topics here. Uh, again, this is about depression. So, um, you know, this. If you're, if you're ever wondering about why why I should pay attention to this, why does this relate to me? You know, if you've ever felt lonely or if you've ever felt sad um, or if you are feeling, you know, mentally unwell, uh, if you are feeling symptoms of depression, whether it's big or it's small, you know, we're, all, we're here for you. Um, this is all for you and to just let you know that we're here 
and uh, that's why we're addressing all this today. But let's bring it back up again, a little bit of light. Ease in question, right? That was a, whew, that was not ease in. Uh, but ease in question, all right? Uh, where is it? Yes, in high school, did you guys know that you would be going into therapy? If not, what did you want to be? Um, I'll start. I definitely did not think that I would go into therapy. I just knew that I wanted to do something in psychology, um, but psychology is really broad. So I was like, do I want to be a criminal psychologist? Do I want to be any other kind of psychologist? <laughs> do you know any other kind of psych or psychologist? Is that the only two, criminal psychologists and marriage family therapists? Yeah. Oh, At one point, I was really interested in being, I don't know if anyone has seen the show Criminal Minds, but one of those kinds of people, which is not right. what I really wanted to do. Right. But at the time, that's what I thought I wanted to do. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Criminal Minds, never watched it, but I'm sure it's good. Uh, <laughs> but thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, Jeannie, did you? What about you? So <gasps> Her mic's not working. Crazy Curtis. Oh, we said that at the same time. Jinx, Jinx Yomi Yo Soda. Soda. Oh, geez. This is, this is awkward. Okay. <clears throat> oh, it's working. All right. Um, so I think similarly, I also wanted to, because I studied psychology in college. So that was my, like, interest. And then I also knew that I wanted to work with children. Um, so I was thinking, okay, I like working with children. Should I become a teacher? But I was like, nah, I don't want to teach like a classroom full of kids I, I kind of like more of the one-on-one -on -one setting so it like kind of fit perfectly together in that way yeah. yeah and I think you chose the right path because I don't think you would be a very good teacher just kidding <laughs> okay you know what I'll, I'll tell you guys well I'm trying to study medicine right now right um, but I obviously I didn't think of that when I was going through you know, even college. In high school, I wanted to be, uh, if anything, like the dream job would have been to be an actor. You know, I loved acting. Um, if you guys didn't know, I am Archie in BBS and dad. I played those roles and I love just being on stage. Being in front of the camera is not too bad of an issue for me. It just feels like life. You're just pretending to be someone else and I love it. Right now, I'm <laughs> pretending to be someone who's good at talking, so. All right, <laughs> so there's our little ease in question, um, but let's move on. So it's going to get a little more interesting now. Um, so we're going to actually start with the question that's been sent in. Uh, Curtis, if you can put it up, it's going to be right below us uh, right here. Um, which path <laughs> leads to depression? Which one? So that, that's the question here. Uh, which path leads to depression? Did you want me to answer it? No, because I, I don't know anything. I can answer it. All right. Um, I don't think there is one path that leads to depression. I think it's individual. It's a subjective experience. Um, I don't really think that there's one path that leads directly to depression because everyone processes emotions differently. So. Right. Uh, thank you for that. Yeah, um, this is going to be something that you're talking about. Or, you know, the question was a little bit confusing. If we didn't answer your question the way you wanted it to, the way we want you wanted it to, I'm, I'm very sorry. Um, it's just that uh, this is the best interpretation of it, hopefully. Um, but again, thank you for that. So again, I guess there's no one way. Um, it's, you know, it can come... Which what, what are the ways that it can stem from? Like, I guess, like... It can be from family history. Can you guys give examples of maybe stuff that you've maybe seen um, that, you know, that even the students, we wanted to make it uh, relatable to them. So, like, something that, you know, they go through every day, is there something that can stem depression in that way? Is there any exa examples of that? I think as students, we feel a lot of pressure to perform and be really good in our studies. Um, and while that's important, sometimes we get in over our heads and when we don't perform the way that we wanted to, or we don't do well in school the way that we thought, um, that can be one thing that leads to depression, not feeling good enough about ourselves. Mm. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, I think that's something that a lot of Catapult students struggle with. Um, you know, they're a lot, they're all, I'm sure they're all smart kids, you know, so they have high set expectations set for themselves. 
Um, so it is something that you guys should be wary about, right? Um, especially, or talking to the students, you guys here. Um, just, uh, you know, I think that this is something that we're going to be talking about, but it's putting not our, our identity in ourselves and our uh, accomplishments, but in, you know, God, I guess. Um, just, well, let's bring it back a little bit lighter again before going to more, something more serious. You guys are in very comfortable positions right now. They're sitting crisscross applesauce. Uh, <laughs> I cannot sit like that. Even if I'm on this chair, if I'm on a comfortable couch on the ground, I cannot sit like that. My legs go up like this, and I can't just push them down. Just letting you guys know, fun fact, I'm not that flexible. <laughs> Thank you, Crazy Curtis. Appreciate it. I think we're all thinking that. Yes. Yeah, that was kind of boring. I'm sorry. Okay, let's move on. So then why is it important to acknowledge, you know, mental health? Um, I think in high school, especially guys, you know, I'm very, like, guys are not willing to take mental health seriously. We're like, oh, no, we're good. You know, like, I'm strong. I can take this. You know, I don't need, I don't need help. I don't need, I'm um, like, I'm just sad or today's just a bad day, you know? So why is it important to acknowledge mental health as something, you know, that is impactful? Well, I think first of all, like, if you're not too familiar with, like, mental health and depression, I think I th this was it for me, but when I thought about, like, what someone with depression looked like, I just imagined, like, someone, like, super emo and dark and negative mm and... Um, you know, suicidal, and that's not, I mean, that is, to a certain extent, like, that's what it is, but, um, you know, depression shows up in so many ways. It can just be, like, a little bit of anxiety causes you to be a little bit more negative, or um, you feel, like, a little bit more lazy, but no, it's actually, you're just, you don't have that much energy, so it, like, shows up in so many different ways, so I think it's important to talk about what it actually is, um, and normalize it. I think that's what we're trying to get at today is it's, it's normal. It's very common. Um, the people you might be like sitting right next to might have it. Your family members might be struggling with depression, uh, whether it's like slight or moderate, severe. Um, so I think, yeah, I'm just really excited to talk about what it actually is and we'll dive deeper into like what we can do to help others who are experiencing Right. Uh, Ashley, is there anything that you'd like to say about this topic or this question? Yeah, I think the one thing I would add to that is talking about mental health can be so stigmatizing. Um, it can come with a lot of things. And so sometimes we don't want to share how we're feeling, um, maybe based off of what we might hear from others around us or what, might, what people might think about us. Um, but at the end of the day, not talking about it also doesn't help. It affects us mentally. It affects our studies. It affects our sleep. It affects a lot of things. Um, and there's nothing wrong with reaching out for help if you need help. Um, there's no shame or guilt to that. Um, and there shouldn't be. So I think normalizing mental health is super important. Right. Um, and would you say that that's difficult? I'm sorry, I'm going to bring this up because I'm a guy. Do you feel like it's difficult for men to kind of do this? I know there are two women here. We actually were supposed to have another guy uh, on the show, but unfortunately he was not on the show. What is this? This is, this is the Your What Do You show. Think show. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Phil. <laughs> yes. Uh, doc, ooh, <laughs> don't want to be compared to him. He's a, uh, well, I don't You're like his accent. How about that? Um, <laughs> That's one of the things. But, uh, yeah, so we were supposed to have Caleb. But, you know, I feel like it's difficult for men to, you know, kind of branch out and express their, their emotions. Is there anything that you guys would kind of want to say about that? Just a quick little blurb. Men have emotions, too, um, even if we say that we don't. And I think as a society, we have kind of programmed our men to say, don't feel things or it's wrong to cry or is it wrong to feel sad? Like you have to be macho, is that the right word? Mm -hmm. You have to be strong, but that's not true. Men have emotions too. God wired us to all feel, so. Right, no, that's, that's a great answer. And as the manliest person in this room, I would definitely have to agree with that. Um, no, God! <laughs> 
Uh, I guess Crazy Curtis doesn't agree, but we all know the truth here. All right? Um, but thank you for that. Um, so we, we just addressed why mental health is important. Uh, we want to normalize it. If we normalize it, we're able to fix it, which I think goes with the quote that, that Clyde's actually put on our uh, page for later. Uh, I'm sure the small group leaders will share it to you guys. Um, but it's about depression, about normalizing. If we're able to talk about it, then we're able to address it. Something along the lines of that. It's with Fred Rogers. I love him. He's one of my favorite people, one of my biggest you know, inspirations of why I am who I am. But uh, let's move on. This is more of the lengthier topic right here. Um, there are those who are struggling, you know, um, whether it be students in Catapult, whether it's their friends. I think it's, it's very important for us to know how to talk and how to reach out to these people. Um, I'm sure that, like, one of us or someone around us is affected with depression, anxiety, any kind of mental illness. How do we, you know, reach out to these people, let them know that we can, or how do we love on these people, if anything? Show them the love of God in any way. I think I would start by saying embracing them with empathy and validation. I think when we empathize with others without feeling the need to hold their circumstances or their situations and compare it, um, then there's less chance that our loved ones will feel alone in their pain. Um, through empathy, we can give our loved ones strength that they can be vulnerable with us and share raw emotions with us. Um, validation is acknowledging a person's feelings um, even if we don't agree or we don't feel like their response is how we would respond, um, validation is just being there for them and acknowledging what they're going through. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Jeannie, is there anything that you'd like to say about it? Yeah, um, I actually have some more of like practical tips mm -hmm. if we want to get into that right now. I love practicality. Awesome possum. Nice. Yes. Okay, so I think it might it might be up on there, Crazy Curtis. Um, it might be down here, actually. Or down, down yes, here. Down here. Um, I'm going to start with, yeah, just straight to it, like super simple practical things that not everyone knows, actually. Um, so the first thing is I'll give like five things not to say to someone with depression. So make sure you don't confuse this with things that you should say, okay? Th these are things not to say to someone with depression. These are things not. Not to not say. Not. Not, to, don't not do to it. Not to not say? Not. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. These are things to not say. Mm -hmm. Very serious. To not say. <clears throat> uh, so number one, it could be, don't say this, okay? <laughs> okay this you, is I don't confusing. think you can emphasize it enough. Can you just say it like three more times? Don't say this. <laughs> okay. Okay? Don't say, it could be worse. Mm. Mm. Don't say, there's people who have it worse than you. Mm. Don't say, just stop being lazy. Don't say, cheer up. And lastly, don't say, just pray about it. And I actually wanted to explain that one a little bit more. I know it's really easy for our Christian brothers and sisters to say, just pray about it. Um, and maybe like your sadness or negative thoughts, maybe it'll just go away if you pray about it. Um, I mean, this is really tricky, but I think if you look at it in terms of, let's say, like, mental health, is it's actually, like, an illness. So if we were to compare it to someone who has, like, cancer or something, you wouldn't just say, oh, just, just pray about it and just leave it at that. Yeah. No, I mean, you definitely would want to pray about it, right, for sure. Um, that's only one of the things that you should do out of, like, a whole bunch of things that you can do. It's just one of the resources, one of the strengths, one of the things that you can do. Uh, but you definitely want to seek out help. You want to seek a therapist. You want to be able to talk to your friends about it. Maybe go to your small group leader. There's so many more things that you can offer them instead of just saying, just pray about it. Because then it, it's kind of um, invalidating it almost and like making it seem like a minuscule problem. So, yeah. So the, those are things not to say to someone struggling with depression. Not to say. Not to say. Not to say. Don't say it. Don't. 
just don't say yeah, it. Don't, I, I'm not saying. I didn't say anything. Don't say it. <laughs> okay, I didn't. <laughs> and to remind you guys, uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say it. But you should also not say variations of these words. It's not just word for word. Like, don't think that just because, like we said, don't say just pray about it. You can say just think about it. You know, you can't say that either. Don't, like, be smart, guys. You guys are smart. Um, I know that you, I said it earlier. Um, don't say any variations of these kinds of words. Also, yeah, even though I'm going to say it, just, just think about it for a second, all right? <laughs> <laughs> like, be smart. Um, like, it doesn't just, like, come down to these, like, five things or six things that we just said. There are other things that you shouldn't say. So the, the key thing is be mindful, mindful, all right? Okay, so we, that, was, that was a good list. Okay, so do you have any other lists that you would like to tell us? Yeah, I have two more. So the second thing, these are five things that you can say. Can say. Can say. Can say. C-A-N. Can can the can can. Yeah, can. Not, not should, but these are things that you can say to uh -huh. someone struggling with um, depression, anxiety, any mental health issues. One is, I'm proud of you for fighting these painful symptoms every day. So some of the things that they might be going through, it might actually be really painful. Like it might not be like a, like a physical pain, but actually it can't even manifest into physical pain. It really can. So just saying I'm proud of you um, for going through this and fighting through it every day. Another thing that you can say is, you're not crazy. Um, some people have a genuine fear of being perceived as like a crazy person. Another thing that you can say is, I may not fully understand what you're going through, but I'm here for you, mm -hmm. right? Which is better, I mean, which is better and different than saying, um, oh, no, I totally understand you. I feel you. That's, that's sympathy, but em true empathy and genuine empathy, like what Ashley was talking about, it's saying, I don't know exactly what you're feeling. I don't know exactly what you think about when you wake up, mm -hmm. but it's saying, I'm here for you regardless. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know what you're going through, but I'm here for you. Right. Um, another thing that you can say is you're not a burden, okay? A lot of people, they don't want to reach out. They don't want to talk to their small group leaders because they feel like a burden to them. Remind them that they're not. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Another one, last one for this point is you are so much more than your depression. You are so much more than your anxiety. You are so much more than the symptoms that you experience every day. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. I have nothing to say about that. That was just amazing. <laughs> simply, yeah. simply amazing. And um, I really like the, the, I may not fully understand what you're going through, but I'm here for you. You know, I think even for me, like, I, I, I'm not the most, you know, Amanda will attest to this. I'm not the most emotionally sensitive person uh, out there. Um, and I don't understand everything but I, I really, truly do want to be there for the people um, mm -hmm. because I love them, I care for them. So, um, yeah, if you guys are struggling with any of this, please, yeah, like Jeannie said, small group leaders are there for you. Um, you know, if you guys feel the heart to reach out to them about something, please uh, do so. Yeah. yeah. I have uh, one last thing. You, that you I have also one last one? Yeah. You're not done? I kind of like, no, I'm, I think you should. No, I never okay, said okay. stop, Shh. yeah. No, no, don't, don't stop. <laughs> okay, this is the last one. But these Aww. are five things that you can do for someone who's struggling with okay. depression. So we've had, we've had can't say, we have can say, and we have do. All right, things yes. you can do. Yeah. Yeah. Can do, can say. Oh, well, this, this, they're smart. They can do this. I don't uh -huh. know if I can. Okay. All right? Okay. Here's, here are five things that you can do. Okay. Physically, practically, oh, practically, tangibly. Yes, yes. Uh, one is reach out to them. Reach out to them, whether it's like, I mean, if you guys are coming to in-person services and you see them, just say hi. Like, that's reaching out to them. Uh, text them, message them, call them, check up on them, Wait. reach out to them. Can you, like, just to pause you right there, um, how, do you guys feel like it's very, you know, like, just saying hi? Like, how important is that? Or how much do you think it impacts someone just saying hi? It's so important. Yeah? It, it's, yeah. 
I feel like it can mean the world to someone. You, we, we don't know what everyone is going through, so even a simple hello or just letting, you, letting them know that you're there with them, mm-hmm. that can mean the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah it, it acknowledges them, right? Mm-hmm. I think that's really important that they're there, that you know, they are welcome to be here. Um, so like, if no one says hi to them, they'd be like, why would I come back? Why would I be here? So yeah. I think this is very important for our catapulters here, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, please, please, please say hello talk to someone it can be even just like a 10 second like hey how have you been like hope you're doing okay and then let's say you don't know how to get out of a conversation that's a whole (laughs) different topic (laughs) okay uh just kidding but just you know like you know i only have a certain amount of like capacity to talk i'm very introverted so you know like it does get tiring so if you do get tired it's understandable but even just like saying hello or just a few like come or like back and forth conversation I think is great mm-hmm. yeah because they already feel kind of invisible and lonely mm-hmm. right so mm-hmm. even literally just like a gesture it'll mean the world to them yeah um, if I can go on okay <laughs> the second thing that you can do is encourage them mm-hmm. which is very similar um, but encourage them just let them know that you know, there's still hope, you know, you can have a good day, you can have negative thoughts and still have a good day, you know. Um, another thing is make time for a deeper conversation. Mm. So <laughs> that's kind of, <laughs> I guess what Phil was talking about. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> was I? <laughs> I don't remember, actually. <laughs> no, I didn't say deeper conversation. I just said, you know, even just a small conversation is good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But deeper, deeper conversation is even better, right? Sure. Sure? Yeah. I think so. But then what do you do when, you know, you're getting a little introverted? Oh, you're getting a little introverted? Yeah, Phil, what do you do? You know, How do you have a deeper conversation? Just pray about it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> don't. Don't just pray about it. Just, uh, um, you know, I think it's like <laughs> when people are really <laughs> trying to <laughs> uh, just... You know, <laughs> you know. I think this is for, you just have to understand the situation, right? Um, if you are in a situation, and especially if it's someone that you know or you're close with, it's great. Um, like, these are people that you care about, so you have more of a strength to do it. But it's also, you know, for those people who are, let's say they're extroverted, they are good at talking. You know, God gave you these gifts um, to use, you know, so that you can use to glorify his kingdom to be a salt and light to the world. So if you are good at talking to people, please use it. It might be scary at first, but I think it practice makes perfect, right? So I wasn't this good of a smooth talker originally. It took a long time for me to be able to talk like this. But, uh, you know, if practice makes perfect, this is why we're having these conversations right here. These are deeper conversations, you know. I, you know, (laughs) <laughs> I'm getting tired just talking to No, I'm not. I'm really not. You know, these are great conversations. And when you do have great conversations, they do energize you. Yeah. So um, I think it comes with strength, patience, um, just trying your best, I think, also is very important. So, yeah. And maybe if I can just add real quick, mm-hmm. if we are more on the introverted side, I know I personally am, um, even lending a listening ear. That is one way to encourage someone, giving space for someone to share their story with you um, or what they're going through. So even if we don't have all the things to say, we can have the ears to listen to someone. Mm. Listening can be even better than talking, right? All right, so let's move on. What are the the next ones? Two more. more? Um, Let's see. One more thing that you can do is plan something you can do together with them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I know that's kind of tricky given, you know, our circumstances right now during, like, quarantine and everything. Mm -hmm. But it gives them hope. Mm -hmm. And it, it, how do you say it? It, like, gives them excitement, Mm -hmm. something to look forward to, Mm -hmm. um, knowing that you want to spend time with them. Mm -hmm. So even if it's just simple as like playing among us together mm-hmm. or like um i don't know getting on zoom and just chatting with them yeah. um last one is pray for them so this is different than just pray about it yeah it is it's but different yeah pray for them pray with them know or tell them that you're praying for them um 
yeah, be vocal about it. Pray out loud for them. Just get on a call and just pray for them. And it'll really, it'll mean the world to them. Yeah. I think, I think the key word is actually the word just, you know. Like it's not, you're not just praying for them. You know, you, you're praying for them, doing all, like finding other avenues to be there for them and reaching out to them. It's not just pray for them. It's, there's actions, actionable items outside of just praying, you know. So I, sorry, were, were you done with all the, the, I think these were wonderful practical ways that you guys can reach out to, to people um, who are struggling with um, any kind of issues, any kind of uncertainty and sadness. So yeah, thank you for that, Jeannie. Thank you for that, Ashley. Um, you know, I think we're almost running out of time here, but I think we're going to address something else. This is the, the, one of the last questions. We're going to kind of bring it back to Jesus in a way with a question uh, that's been sent in uh, through the anonymous text. The question is, if someone who is Christian and believes in Jesus but commits suicide as a result of their depression, will they still go to heaven? And I know that, that this is a really, really interesting and almost very complicated question. Um, but, and I, we, we actually, we talked about this beforehand, kind of went over it, and we decided that maybe I should um, kind of say it. Uh, they educated me. They're, they, they're the ones who taught me this. So I'm not, I was, I'm not, you know, I don't have that background, that therapy background. But, um, you know, they, they actually say the word commit uh, suicide is very st uh, stigmatized nowadays and it's something that you should be wary of uh, for for our listeners for our viewers out there you guys um, the word commit is something that you know it means that they themselves like brought it up they were the one who decided to do it but you know men mental illness is an illness you know it's very much like any other il illness like cancer like um, you know any other kind of disease you don't say that someone committed their death of cancer, right? It's, if anything, they died of cancer. And um, it's the same thing for mental illnesses with suicide. They died of suicide. And I think that's something that you guys should really be careful in how you say it. Um, because, you know, you don't, we want to be wary and sensitive of others and um, their experiences. Um, but going back to the question of, uh, you know, the, going back to this question of will they still go to heaven, I think we, we kind of attack it in the same way, right? Um, in that you, you talked about it earlier with, like, it's all, we treat it as kind of like an illness. If someone dies of an illness, um, well, that is what it is. It is they've died of an illness in a sense. And even though it's, uh, they, they, you know, <laughs> sorry, I almost said it there. See, it, like, we've, we've said it all our, our whole entire lives, but that doesn't mean that it's right, right? Right. Just like, <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, but uh, so, you know, we have to treat it like an illness. And I think there is no, uh, I'm sorry to say this, but there is not a for sure answer. Um, the Bible doesn't really directly say it. But we can have hope in that, in the gospel. Because in the gospel, it says that, you know, if you have faith in Christ, that he died for our sins um, and he rose again from the dead uh, to wipe our slates clean, you know, and if you believe in that, then you are, you know, your sins are forgiven, you know. Um, Jesus died for your sins. Um, and in the same way, that, that's the same thing for, you know, suicide, I think. Um, all the thoughts that might go through your head, um, however full of sin it may be, it's sin that has been wiped clean through Jesus. And hopefully, you know, I don't know who's asking this question and what it's about, whether, you know, you might have someone who has gone through this kind of situation. Um, but it's, it's great to, I think God is a God of grace. God is a God of hope, love. Uh, so I don't uh, believe that, you know, it can just end like that. And it's great to be hopeful. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Uh, and yeah. So I, that was a little bit heavy, um, but I, I think that it, everything we've said was very important, right, guys? So um, we are, I think, done with our topics. Thank you, guys, for speaking. Uh, if you guys are at home, let's give them a round of applause. Yay, they did so wonderful. Um, 
next week we have, we're going to do this again. It's our last one, sadly, because um, there's Thanksgiving break and we have other stuff planned for you guys. Um, but next week we're going to talk about pandemic. So please tune in on this Sunday during the Real Conversation series uh, in the main service. And if you guys have any questions, we'll have a, a number that you guys can send questions to. Let me just close this in prayer. And then you guys are excused to your small groups. And yeah, so let me just pray here. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you so much for even allowing us to be able to uh, provide or talk about this issue because it's so, uh, it can be, you know, uh, something that's kind of hidden deep inside and it's something that we want to bring out, something that we want to normalize. And you just allowed us to do this in this way here. So we just want to praise you. I praise you for your um, your power, your glory, and your grace towards us, oh Lord. I just want to pray for those who, you know, are affected with uh, any kind of mental health issues or mental, you know, just any issues in general. I just pray that you uh, will be a, a guidance, a light to them, uh, and just provide for them in a way that, you know, they will see you and uh, see your love, oh Lord. I just pray that as we go into small group time, that really uh, we produce fruitful conversations and that, you know, everything we talk about just may be glorifying to you. Uh, thank you again for who you are. Just be with us throughout the week, throughout tonight, oh Lord, and in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys and have a good uh, small group session. Do we have uh, outro music? I can sing. <laughs> we did it, guys. I don't know if this is going to be copyright copyrighted, but...